Hey, welcome to the Healthy Postnatal Buddy Podcast with your postnatal expert, Peter Lap. That, as always, would be me. Today, I am talking about how to plan for and succeed at improving your health in 2022. And this will go whatever your goals are to do with physical and mental fitness. Um, basically, it's the start of the new year, so I thought I'd do an episode on, on how to make sure that this year it sticks. If you've tried before to improve your health, whether it's weight loss or weight gain, or going to the gym more, or just moving a bit more, improving your diet, such as recti, improving your posture, maybe finally this is the year your back will start uh, stop hurting, and all that sort of stuff. I will talk you through how to do it and make sure it sticks this year. Uh, without it, of course costing you the world, right? So that's what we're doing today. Nothing else to it. It's the start of a new year. So happy new year. Um, and that's what we're doing. We're going to make sure that 2022 is a year that you can actually achieve all your fitness goals, right? Doesn't that sound awesome? Doesn't that sound worth sticking around for? I think it does, right? Here we go. Hey, welcome to the Healthy Postnatal Body Podcast. Like I said, it is just little old me this week. Happy New Year. This is the podcast for the 2nd of January 2022. So it's a new year. And to be honest, I was going to do like a compilation show or something like that this week, but I didn't really have enough time to put it together. And I thought, you know, compilation shows are one of those lazy uh, <laughs> sort of, I've got nothing to talk about and see how wonderful I am sort of compilation things um, shows that you get at the end of the year. So I might have, maybe I should have thrown it out as a bonus or something like that. Could have done it just in case it was an episode you missed and you thought, ah, you know, snippets, snippets. I might start doing that because we've been going for a little while again. Every now and again, throwing a snippet out. Um, but, you know, I thought, yeah, that's a bit... If the podcast had come out on December 31st or the 30th, I could have done it. Like, I look back to the past year. But I really wanted the last few weeks of the year to lead up to momentum for change, to set you up well in 2022. So that's why I did the binge eating thing with uh, Dr. Livingston last week uh, with Glenn. By the way, you know... Still, go to his website, click whatever you need to click. Uh, have a look at the old podcast description for last week, and you get a free copy of his book, right? Um, just for being good people who listen to this podcast. Um, uh, we did a plant-based dietitian. I did one on why your plants usually fail. And everything was basically gearing up towards you being able to have everything in place to succeed in 2022. And then I would have ruined all that momentum by doing doing some sort of look back sort of thing. When I, you know, I'd much rather do a program on how you can succeed in 2022. And well, let's make sure this this year it sticks, right? Let's everybody or a lot of people have have some goals. You see all the dietitians, all the intuitive eating and anti diet dietitians, and on the other hand, all the on the other hand, Noom and Keto and Huel and all those horrible fucking companies are pardon my French, <laughs> are out there now trying to sell you whatever they're selling. Everybody's selling you stuff, right? That's kind of what they're doing. Nobody's helping. Everybody's selling. And let me be the voice of calm in an oasis of noise. So I'm just going to tell you how you can plan for and succeed at and make it stick this year, whatever your goal is. Doesn't matter whether it's weight loss or weight gain, or like I said, fix your diastasis recti, or finally improve your health a bit. Maybe, you know, maybe that shoulder that's always been hurting. Maybe this is a year that you'll finally get the right tools and the right, with the right planning, we can make that stop hurting. Right? If you have pelvic floor problems, this is the year you can get that sorted. All we have to do is set ourselves up to succeed. And the same goes for weight loss and, and, and all that sort of stuff. doesn't matter what diet you're thinking of choosing. 
I will talk you through it on, on how to make sure that you can actually succeed at those goals without immediately, after three weeks, uh, throwing your toys out of the pram and going back to your old way of life and then having wasted another year not getting to where you want to be. Um, and that's the important bit, right? Now, for, of course, you know, we'll talk about how goal setting and all that sort of stuff in a little bit as well. But what I'd like to start off with, basically, I'll take you through a form that I use with all my all my personal training clients and, and one or two other people. And at the end of this, my goal is for you to have a clear idea. If you answer these questions clearly and you write this stuff down a little bit for yourself, you will have a clear idea as to what your goals really are and what is achievable and not and how to plan to succeed for that. Right, so... I'm going to stick as an example to uh, weight loss and exercise. That is just as an example for your goals. Um, but that is just so I have a constructive, a, a, a clear narrative throughout the podcast. So this goes, like I said, goes for any goal. If you're looking to de-stress, if you're looking to sleep better and all that sort of stuff, this will help with that if you, if you just follow these steps. Right, so let's get cracking. The first question I always ask anybody when they come to me for uh, fitness and exercise and, and health and exercise and all that sort of stuff is, have you ever done any form of exercise before? Or if you're looking at diet, have you any, done any form of dieting before? And what did you enjoy about it? Right? That is the, the starting point of any successful health management program, so to speak, if I use, <laughs> if it doesn't sound too jargony, uh, any sort of health management program is, what do you enjoy about it? If you start on a negative with any of this sort of stuff, you are not going to be able to succeed because you can't do something negative for years and years on end. You can't do it. It's simply, it's, it's horrible and you won't enjoy it. And that's why most people fail. So have you ever done anything like that before? And what did you enjoy about it? So ask yourself the question. If you're looking at exercise, yeah, I've exercised before. I don't know. I, I used to, say you've done three or four things. Say you've done, you've played football in the past, or you've played a team sport in the past, and you've gone to the gym occasionally uh, for weight training, and you've gone to the yoga classes or local Pilates studio. Say those three things are all things that you've tried before. So have you ever done any of these forms before? Yes, these three. What did you enjoy about it? If you then come up with saying, I hated the weightlifting, um, I hated the, the yoga, although I did quite enjoy the yoga when I used to go with my friends, uh, but I liked the football, Right? Then that is what you kind of should write down. So you like the football, why do you like the football? Right? What do you enjoy about it? Because um, that is the next step. And if then it turns out you are, the element you like about it is the team element, which is also why you enjoyed going to yoga with your friend and why you hated lifting weights by yourself. Then you can say, okay, the best way for me to achieve something, to achieve whatever my goal is, weight loss or muscle gain or whatever, is by doing it with somebody else, right? That is the whole point of that first question. What have you done before and what did you enjoy about it? Um, so if you say, actually, uh, my goal here is to tone up, to get stronger, then the solution that you might otherwise come up with is saying, uh, so that means I need to go back to the gym and I hate lifting weights and it's going to suck and all sort of stuff, right? Because the only way to tone up and to get stronger is by lifting things. That is just the way it is. Uh, however, if you enjoy the team element of it, then you can say, hey, maybe a CrossFit type gym or a gym at least with a strong um, team building atmosphere is maybe for you. Maybe group exercise classes are the way to go for you. You know, within Edinburgh, we have two or three uh, gyms that are specifically set up for that. Um, I'm not going to name their names. <laughs> Just, but every every place out there has 
a good fitness gym, every city in the world will have this, a good fitness gym where there's a strong uh, team building element, a strong group atmosphere. So that might well, might well then be for you. So the reason you didn't like weightlifting in that, this particular case wasn't that you hated the lifting of weights, it hated, it's that you hated doing it by yourself. The same as most people will have done some form of uh, of diet before. You know, if you've been trying to lose weight for a while, or for a few years, and you likely have tried one or two things. And if you say, okay, I hated keto, I despise it because I, I hated the low carb element of it. But if you then said, I like counting calories, or I liked... Uh, let's stick to diets that work, right? So that rules out Weight Watchers and Scottish Slimmers and all those bloody clubs. Um, I liked to eat healthy on the Mediterranean diet because I like to eat a lot of fish and all that sort of stuff. That's what I enjoyed about it. Then, you know, say, say we'll stick to, you've tried keto, you've tried counting calories and you've tried the Mediterranean diet, those three. Now, what did you like about it? Well, I really like the variety in the Mediterranean diet. Um, I hated counting calories on the keto diet, uh, or on the, on the counting calories diet. And I wasn't keen on keto because I didn't, it was just a bit boring. I enjoyed carbs too much or whatever. I, then you know, not only are keto and Vigny not for you, then you can look at the Mediterranean diet and write that down as, I enjoyed the variety of it. And then you could potentially say, okay, Mediterranean diet maybe didn't work for me. Although, of course, that doesn't mean um, that you have to go back to Mediterranean diet. But it then means that the Mediterranean diet worked for you because there was a large amount of variety in there or a large amount of fish or whatever you enjoyed about that diet. That is what you focus on. Right? We'll come to the obstacles in a little bit. Um, with these things. So what are your fitness goals, right, is the next question. So have you done any form of exercise or diet before and what did you enjoy about it? That is your fundamental question. Where, where can you find the joy? That's the most important thing. And secondly, what are your fitness goals? Right? Do you, do you want to lose X amount of weight? Do you want to be stronger, complete a marathon or heal your diastasis recti or whatever you want to do? Write them down. Always, always, always write your goals down. And by the way, write your goals down. I'm talking about your long-term goals. I'm not talking about a month. I'm talking about 2022. Write it down. What do you want to achieve this year? Your goal could well be, right? I want to lose 80 pounds this year. Doesn't matter what the figure is, right? You want to lose 200 pounds this year. You can write that down. I'm not saying your goals have to be achievable at this stage. I need you to just write them down as you have them in your head. Because if you don't write them down as you have them in your head, then you'll never be pleased with the results you'll get. So write them down. Lose X amount of weight. Increase my deadlift by 50 kg. Complete a marathon. Or a half marathon. Or... Heal my diastasis recti or fix my posture, right? Any of these questions will do. Uh, be able to play with my kids without being in pain. All that sort of stuff. Or just, you know, be less stressed, whatever it is. Like I said, we'll stick to diet and exercise for this particular example. But this works for absolutely everything. So what are your goals? That's the second thing. Your goals for 2022. The next question has to be, why are these your goals? Right? In this particular example, why do you want to lose this specific number of weight? Why did you write down 80 pounds? Why did you write down 200 pounds? The goal isn't to question the number here. The goal is to question the thinking here. Right? So... When people come to me and say, uh, what are, when I say, what are your fitness goals? And they say, I want to heal my diastasis recti. That's still one of the main reasons people come to me. So awesome. Why is that your goal? 
And then you say, oh, because it will make me feel better, because I'll be stronger, because this really bothers me. Whatever the reason is, you need that on paper. So if you don't specify what the reason is, it could be any superficial reason, it's completely fine, right? If you say, ah, because I think I look better and I want my friends to all be jealous of me. Yeah, fine, go for it. Um, because I just broke up with somebody and I want to look amazing next year, so they'll all be jealous. I want to be back on the market. It doesn't matter what your, why, what your reason for the goal is. It really doesn't, not at this stage. So write them down. Why is it your goal? Why is it 100 kg? I get a lot of people that come to me saying, I want to lose weight. Uh, I don't do an awful lot of weight loss, but I still have two or three weight loss clients um, because the methodology works, right? So they come to me and they say, um, I want to lose X amount of weight. And then when I say, why do you want to lose this particular amount of weight, this specific amount of weight? They usually come back with something, especially men, they'll come back to me saying, yeah, because this was the weight I was when I was still playing rugby when I was 25, right? And that's okay. It doesn't matter why it is your goal. That's what you need to write down at this stage. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, this is the next question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how determined are you to reach that particular goal that you've just written down? Right? It's really important that you think about this. So a 10 is, I will do whatever it takes to achieve this particular goal. Uh, so that's very strong. That means if I, I will do absolutely anything. If that means missing birthday parties, if that means uh, telling uh, never to drink again, whatever, for, for, for the course of, of the year until my goal is achieved, then that's fine. That's a 10. A one is, yeah, I don't actually want to do anything for it. This is also completely fine. Whatever your motivation is, or your, der the, your determination is, you just write that down and you say, on a scale of one to 10, how determined am I actually, am I actually to reach that goal? Anything in between is fine. So a seven is pretty determined. Don't write down a nine if you don't really mean it. Right? This is all about honesty and you're only writing this down for yourself. So there's no point in lying. A lot of people tell me when they've never exercised before um, and they come to me and they say, I'm determined to exercise three times a day. I'm going to get this goal. It's, it's about a nine on my list of priorities. And it's clearly only about a two or three because fundamentally they have other priorities. So if you have, if your family and all that is significantly more important to you, as in you're not an Olympic athlete, and because those guys and girls are all selfish arseholes, right? Because you have to be to perform at that level, right? Um, there's a lot of sacrifice to be made, and uh, if you want to be at that level, that's a ten. That's Olympic athlete level determination. An eight isn't that. An eight is saying I don't know. I'll still want to attend one or two birthday parties, have a have your kids, you know, piece of cake. A five, if you're talking about weight loss. Five is, I can't really be bothered changing my diet too much, but, you know, I'll try. Right? That sort of thing. So how determined are you to reach the goals? Then the next question is quite an important one, but for a different reason than most personal trainers think it is. When do you want to achieve these goals by? So say again, we're talking about losing a bit of weight. Say 80 pounds or 200 pounds or heal your diet, diet status right now. doesn't matter, right, what your goal is. Say 200 pounds, I want to lose 200 pounds. Okay, when do you want to achieve these goals by? And be specific with the date. Really nail that down, because there's always a reason why it's in your head. There's always a date in your head. If your date is ah, sometime this year, okay, fair enough. For, for most people, they have some sort of idea. Um, so you say, I want to lose 200 pounds. And we'll stick to that example, because there's a reason I'm saying it. So say on a scale of 1 to 10, you're an 8 at determination. You want to lose 200 pounds. And you want to do that by June the 1st. Because that's when it's holiday season again. Right? As soon as you're writing that down, you can already see things start to fall apart a little bit. <laughs> I hope. Um, right? 
but write it down. When do you want to achieve these goals by? So if you have a diastasis recta for three years, it's completely fine. This year is the year I'm going to fix it. When do you want to have your diastasis recta healed by? Just write it down and be as specific as you can. Then the next question pops in. How much time are you realistically willing and able to spend training, dieting, cooking, whatever it is, in an effort to achieve your goals? Big question now. How much time are you realistically willing and able to spend training? I get a lot of people that come to me saying, I can do go to the gym three times a week for an hour. I can exercise three times a week for an hour. And these are usually moms with one or two kids. Um, and I just go, no, you can't. You don't have the time to spend three or four hours a week training uh, for most people, unless you have like help and all that sort of stuff and you can maybe make it work. But most women especially have other things to do. Guys tend to have jobs. Women tend to have a million, <laughs> a million things to do, including jobs. And uh, in my case, with the women I deal with, baby duties and toddler duties and all that sort of stuff. So how much time are you realistically willing and able to spend training in an effort to achieve your goals? Now, if you're talking about weight loss, we're not just talking training, right? We're talking cooking and all that sort of stuff. How much time are you realistically willing and able to spend cooking in an effort to achieve your weight loss goal? How much time are you willing and able to spend planning your, your weekly meals in an effort to achieve your goal? So how much time are you um, with regards to mental health? How much time are you realistically willing and able to spend meditating in an effort to achieve your goal of improved mental health? That is the question you're asking. How much time are you going to put in? Um, remember, you told me what your goals were. You, you said to yourself why these are your goals. You said how determined you are to reach those goals. right? So if you say I'm a 10, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm a 10 and determine how to reach my goal. And then you tell me you only want to spend two or three hours working on your goal. And those two things are not really compatible. right? If you're a level 10 determined, level 9, 10 determined, you're willing to do whatever it takes. How much time you're realistically willing and able to spend, however much time you want me to spend in there, Peter. That is that is the answer. How much time... I've had clients come to me before, and we're talking like um, slightly higher end, financially very secure clients um, who whose main goal for their for their work is to look a certain way or to feel a certain way. And they will do whatever I tell them to do. You know, people that work towards movies and all that sort of stuff. Uh, like again, Olympic level athletes, they are willing to do whatever it takes to achieve that goal, to spend however much time it, it really takes. Andy Murray spends four or five hours a day training or used to before his his... He messed up his hip. What are you willing to sacrifice? Yeah, I won't see my daughter being born. But that's what I'm willing to do. Because I'm training this afternoon doing leg presses. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, so again, write that down. And make sure everything matches up. Don't lie to yourself. If you say, I can I can commit two hours a week to, making, to achieving my goal, then that is fine. There is no right or wrong here. There is no catch. There is no trap. There is, it's all very straightforward stuff. Right? But then we get to the next question, which is what obstacles can you think of that might prevent you from reaching your goals? Um, of course, when you scale of 1 to 10 determined, you're 10 determined. There's nothing that gets in the way because everything gets cancelled. But for most normal people, things like big events, uh, Meals out, parties, all that sort of stuff. 50th birthday party coming up, 40th birthday party coming up. Work deadlines for a lot of people. They've got stuff to do. They've got a busy job. A lot of my clients uh, have a couple of toddlers running around. That sort of stuff can be an obstacle to you exercising a lot, having to take care of your kids. Nights out, lack of dietary knowledge, not knowing how to cook. If you're talking weight loss, not knowing how to cook your own food is an obstacle to weight loss. Um, not being in the right frame of mind is an obstacle to reaching your goals. Always. 
with regards to say your mental health is struggling, uh, suffering from anxiety and depression, that can really get in the way of any sort of health and fitness goals, right? You have to account for that stuff. So let's write that down. What obstacles can you think of? And this is, if you're honestly, and if, mo if, if most people are honest about this, this can be quite the list. I don't trust people that say none. <laughs> because if you tell me you're a scale of one to 10, you're eight or nine plus determined, and you can't think of any obstacles, then you would already be an Olympic level athlete or have achieved your goals. There isn't a single person out there that is level 10 determined, that has no obstacles, that hasn't already started. Right? That is not level 10. That it, it just isn't. Um, but write down your optical, obstacles. And again, it doesn't matter how many there are. We'll overcome them all. Right? Then the next question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you that you can achieve your goals? And why do you feel this level of confidence? As in, make sure you have something to back this up for yourself. Again, this is not for me. You're not trying to convince me, right? You write down and you say, I'm a level nine confident that I can achieve this. Okay. If you've tried something 10 times before and it's not really succeeded, then why are you now level nine confident? Write down what your level, what, what backs that level up, that level of confidence. And again, just be honest with yourself. This stuff is all about self-discovery and finding out what really works and what will not work for you. So we've established just at the end of, of this little thing, because, you know, the, ne the next question is the big one. We've established what you used to enjoy about stuff, whether it's diet or exercise, what your goals are, why they're your goals on a level 10, a scale of 1 to 10, how determined you are to reach them, when you want to reach them by, how much time you're realistically willing and able to spend on them, on achieving your goals, what obstacles you have, and how confident you are of those, right? Now, then you go back over the form and you have a look to see whether everything matches up. So say you want to lose 80 pounds, you want to lose it by March. And you want to lose 80 pounds because, you know, the last time you were 80 pounds lighter, it was 25 and you were playing loads of rugby or, or something along those lines. And you now weigh uh, 80 pounds more than you used to at the time. You're now 45 and you've got a busy job and a couple of kids and all that sort of stuff. Now, the question is, you then have to ask, is how realistic is my goal? On a scale of 1 to 10, how determined are you to reach that goal? I'm a, I'm a level 10, but I've got a couple of kids. Am I willing to never see my kids for the next X amount of time to, in an effort to achieve the goal? So is my goal now realistic with regards to the, the time frame that I've put on it? Is the first question. Is my goal realistic? Am I able to meet this goal with the level of time I'm willing to commit to it? Is my goal realistic with regards to the amount of obstacles I have in my way? Do I have other obstacles to overcome first on my journey to achieving my goal? Such as, I don't know, I don't know how to cook, but I want to lose X amount of weight. So I'm relying on convenience meals and takeaways and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I don't know how to cook. Right? It's important to figure this out. Because the next question is, on what I always ask people that come to me is, okay, what can I do to help you achieve your goals? What assistance would you benefit of from the most? What is the most useful form of assistance you can bring into your life to help you achieve your goal? So when we're talking about diastasis recti, if one of you have done an exercise before, yeah, I didn't mind exercising. Uh, I like it by myself. Awesome, what's your goal? Um, heal my diastasis recti. Why? Because I want to have a flat tummy. Scale of 1 to 10, how determined are you? Yeah, about a 6 or a 7. When do you want to achieve it by? I don't know, sometime this year is fine. Uh, 9th of September, whatever it is. How much time are you willing to spend on it? Yeah, a little bit of time, not too much. Because I'm a couple of kids, because those are my obstacles of work events coming up. I'm not eating all that well and all that. 
Um, as in, my diet makes me bloat a little bit every now and again, uh, which I'm not willing to change. Um, and that's all completely fine, right? How confident are you? Yes, yeah, six or seven. What assistant would you benefit from the most? Well, I need to know how to heal my diastasis recti. So then the best thing you can do is, you know, in this particular example, which I use deliberately, sign up for HPMB, for healthypostnatalbody.com, and start on start on a postnatal program. In, of course, as I would always say, start on my postnatal program rather than Mutu, because you'll save yourself a bit of money. Um, <laughs> um, if you're talking weight loss, what assistance would you benefit from the most to help you achieve weight, uh, to help you lose weight, if you don't know how to cook, is probably not a personal trainer. Right? It, it'd be useful to have a personal trainer and have some accountability and all that sort of stuff. But the main thing you would benefit from, if, if not knowing how to cook is your biggest obstacle to to achieving your goal of weight loss is taking cooking classes, healthy eating cooking classes. And I'm not talking about bloody mindful chef or, or, or Noom or any of those companies. I'm not saying they, they won't be useful. I'm just saying that it doesn't have to be hello fresh in all those clouds, right? I'm saying maybe a cookbook, maybe spend a bit of time with a chef uh, or in a cooking school. I know cooking classes can be expensive, right? In Edinburgh, definitely. Edinburgh is not cheap for cooking classes. Asking friends how to cook is a cheaper way of doing it. Asking other people for assistance is by far the easiest way to get to your goal, by the way, right? And it doesn't... I like. I always say, work with an expert if you can afford it. If you can't afford it, fine. Go to YouTube and figure it out for yourself. So healthy eating, make sure what you're, what you're looking at on, on YouTube is actually healthy eating related and not low calorie donuts or this is how you cook a steak and then drown it in butter. No, healthy eating, healthy eating is not necessarily equate to weight loss, by the way, but for most people it does, right? Um, just because you're cutting a lot of rubbish out when you eat healthily. Again, if this is your goal, if your goal is to lose weight, and the obstacle is not knowing how to cook, learning how to cook is by far the most important thing to do. And then you ask yourself, what can I afford? What assistance do I need and what can I afford to do? Right? If you're not willing to ask for help at this stage to help you overcome your obstacles, I would argue that your level of determination is pretty low. Right? So making sure you are aware of your obstacles is actually key to overcoming those obstacles and succeeding. Right? Every obstacle you've written down is an obstacle that can be overcome. Every single one of them. You know, when you're talking work deadlines or something like that, you just take them into account. As in, I'm going to, I'm going to have, I have several female clients that are sporadically really, really busy with work. Um, like, high-flying executives and every now and again they know they've got a big project finishing i don't know end of april this year and they know that for a two three week period that's that month they're not really going to be able to focus that much on their health and fitness as, as they otherwise would on they're not going to be able to focus that much on achieving the goal that they might have as, as they otherwise would um in that case you just bump your goal out by a couple of weeks as Buddy snores in the background. <laughs> uh, he's very comfortable. Right? You have to take that into account. The obstacle that is in your way is not necessarily an obstacle that can be overcome easily, but it's there, as in that you can just move aside, as so say, and I don't know, a night out coming up with colleagues, but I don't want to go anyway, so I'll just cancel that. Right? But it's always something that can be dealt with. There isn't a single obstacle that I can think of that people have that cannot be taken account of when it comes to achieving your goals. I've had people with four kids exercise regularly, even four young children exercise regularly 
in an effort to heal the diastasis recti. All it needed was a bit of amendment on my side uh, of the time of, of, of my postnatal exercise package. So this is Edinburgh based, right? So not for most of you guys. Um, but it can always be, we can always make allowances for this. That's kind of that's kind of what I'm saying. So make sure once you've gone through all all this thing, I have never come across anyone that looks at this entire list, answers all the questions openly and honestly, then analyzes it, looks at it again to see whether they're being realistic with their goals or whether they've just plucked figures out of thin air or realistic with it that did not meet their goals that year. Because believe it or not, meeting your goals is nothing to do with motivation. It really, really isn't. It, it, it's, you know, at the start of January, everybody's motivated to lose a lot of weight. But the motivated people aren't the ones that are still there at the end of the year achieving all their goals. It's the people that have put a plan in place that is realistic. You know, if your goal is to lose 50 pounds, and it doesn't matter when you lose it. You know, say, right, I'm just throw this out there. Say you're 35 years old, right? Then that is pretty much smack dab in the middle of the demographic of this podcast. Um, 32 to 35 years old, and you're a woman. And you've been struggling to lose weight for the best part of, I don't know, six, seven years, which is, again, not unheard of for a lot of people. And you'd like to lose... 20 pounds, 30 pounds, something like that. So, you know, stone and a half, two stone, something something like that. Does it really matter whether you lose that by March or June or December? No. I, I would argue it doesn't. Unless you have a big thing coming up, it probably doesn't. Right? If you have a movie coming out and you need to lose 20 pounds, you don't give me a bell, I'll help you out. But the studio will probably pay for it and you probably don't, don't need me. Um, if you have a wedding coming up in June, then maybe it matters that you reach a goal by June. But for most people, unless you have a really specific date that you need to achieve it by, I would argue that the date doesn't matter that much. And therefore, a lot of obstacles that might be in your way can very easily be overcome because you're not rushing. Right? So looking at that piece of paper then, if you say, I want to lose 30 pounds and I want to get that done sometime 2022. It'd be nice to end 2022 20 pounds lighter because then I'll feel better and I'd like to be healthier and I'd like to be more toned and all that sort of stuff. And my lack of cooking knowledge is, is one of the obstacles that is holding me back. Awesome. Then January is an excellent time to go and invest or go and look at and spend some time planning uh, your YouTube journey and, uh, and your weight loss journey. And to think to yourself, okay, what recipes do I like to eat? Uh, what kind of food do I enjoy eating? What kind of diet? And then question one, if you ever done any form of diet before, what do you enjoy about it? That is where you start. It starts with joy. It has to start with what you enjoyed. It has to, otherwise it, it's not going to stick. I promise you it's not going to stick. And then you can take, I know, I'm not saying put it off because you're not putting off because you're taking action then at that stage. Right? Action doesn't start at the moment where you start eating less. Action, action starts at the moment where you're planning. Right? And this sounds maybe rather counterintuitive for people. But if you say, and again, stick 20, 30 pounds to lose, end of the year is completely fine. The best way for you to do that is by starting your cooking journey. So you say, okay, and then not knowing how to cook is my obstacle. Okay, I'm going to learn one recipe this week. Just one. So you need to do. Um, I'm going to find a meal that I enjoy. Healthy eating, right? Always stick to healthy eating. That's that's what I always say. That, that is your basis of everything in life. Um, I'm going to find a meal that I enjoy and I'm going to find 
I'm going to learn how to cook it so I don't rely on convenience foods and takeaways and, and, and all that sort of stuff, Hello Fresh and all those sort of things anymore. Uh, I'm going to figure out the day. This is Chile and I'm going to go to Sainsbury's or Marks and Spencer's or Tesco or Asda, wherever you go, a little. You go to whatever shop you go to and you buy the ingredients to learn how to cook that one meal. And you're going to try to cook it. It'll take an eternity because it always does. Even a 15 minute stir fry takes a long time to get right if you've never done a stir fry before. <laughs> right? I know Jamie Oliver did a book, 15 minute meals or something like that. And your bish bash bosh and a bit. Yeah, once you know how to do them, they're 15 minute meals. But the first time you spend an hour and a half just dicking around in the kitchen, <laughs> sorry, messing around in the kitchen. Um, so accept that it's going to take a bit of time and there will be frustrations along the line. If you have, like I said, if you have a friend that really knows how to cook, don't just ask him for the recipe. Just say, hey, next time you're making that, can I potter around the kitchen and see how you do it? Can you help me? Can you learn, teach me how to cook this? Too many people just ask for a recipe. Do you know how many recipe books are sold every year? It's depressingly, a depressingly high number of recipe books are sold that are never used, ever, because they're just recipe books. You know, I like Anja Manan. She's one of my favorite uh, cooks. I like Rick Stein and all those sort of guys. Guys, if I have Rick Stein's Road to Istanbul book, is, is a great book. Anjum's uh, got a lot of cool books out there. Uh, Otto Lenghi, right, has, a, has some simple uh, sweet and, and whatever books out there. If I don't feel like messing about with those things, if I were friends with them, I'd ask them. <laughs> right, let me put it that way. If I knew Rick Stein, and, you know, inshallah, at some stage, I, I, I may well do. Um, <laughs> if I bump into Rick Stein. He was my neighbor, right? I wouldn't buy his book if I didn't know how to cook. I would ask him, hey Rick, you like cooking. I liked I, I liked what you did on the program the other day. Would you mind showing me how to cook this? Friends don't mind showing friends how to cook stuff. Friends don't mind showing other friends how to do something they are good at. They love that stuff. So that is what you need to do then. If, if your biggest obstacle is dietary knowledge, get someone to help you, right? That is level one. If you know someone who can cook well, get them to help you cook. If you don't know someone to help you cook well, awesome. Go onto YouTube, find someone you like to follow who doesn't oversimplify stuff. Uh, so who knows what they're talking about and doesn't just go the Jamie Oliver ah bish bash bosh she's job done the, 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 the John Wicks approach the lean in 15 nonsense because um, this stuff takes a bit of time to learn so you want to lose 20-30 pounds by the end of the year that's fine in January you lose you, you, you learn how to cook four healthy meals and in February, you just keep adding a bit to it. And then you start experimenting with it because you're doing the thing you enjoy doing. You're, you're eating the thing you enjoy eating. That's the first question. Right? If you can get some exercise in there, awesome, that'll help you lose weight quicker. But if your biggest obstacle is dietary knowledge, and that is what you improve. And you probably find that come March time, you won't have lost that much weight yet. But that's okay. You'll know you've lost, I don't know, five pounds, something like that. Actually, five pounds puts you bang on target to lose 20 pounds by the end of the year. So say you've lost two pounds, two pounds by March. That is not the stage to get concerned. Because you're still learning and you're planning and you're plotting and you're scheming and you're, you're building up to having the knowledge to drop the pounds in the second part of the year. Too many people when they set themselves a relatively long-term goal or a goal without a date, get bogged down in the first few weeks or months or days of that, of that thing, which is why they keep choosing shitty diets, which is why they sign up for personal training and a gym membership in the first week of January when they haven't never, they never visited the gym before, they never met the personal trainer before, they haven't had a chat with them to see if they're nice people. They haven't had a. They haven't looked to see whether they get on. They they went out to Nike, 
the, to the Nike shop on day one. They bought all the expensive fitness gear. They signed up to the expensive gym and they bought 10 PT sessions with someone who they don't know is qualified, who they don't know will support them in, in, in achieving their goals. Or they sign up to Weight Watchers or they go full keto and then buy one of those crappy send me at home, send me keto meals at home sort of deals. Right? And they go full on, I'm going to go keto this year and there will be there will be no cakes and there will be no this and there will be no that. And everything comes from a place of 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 deprivation, <laughs> of, of a place of of denying yourself the joy. Right? And by Allowing yourself the joy, I don't mean eat all the donuts in the world. I mean, uh, of depriving yourself joy. And that is uh, doing something you hate. I'm going to do something I hate this year. I'll do it for the year in an effort to achieve my goal. No one has ever succeeded doing it that way. Ever. It just doesn't happen. So take the time to plan this stuff. Answer the questions. Have you ever done anything like that before? And what did you enjoy about it? Where do you find the joy? What are your goals Write them down and be specific in what your goals are. Why are they your goals? Why do you want to lose X amount of weight? Why? What is your motivation? Any motivation is fine, right? Scale, what's your determination? Scale of 1 to 10. How determined are you to reach your goals? Pick a date. Any date. When do you want to achieve these goals by? Right? How much time are you realistically willing and able to spend on achieving your goals. Then look back and see, is this realistic? Am, am my goals not too far out of reach? Do I need to adjust my goals? You don't stop and say, well, my goals are unachievable, right? I can't lose 80 pounds in, in six months, so I don't want to lose any, any, any at all. I'm not gonna lose any weight at all. No, you adjust your goals, you move your goals. Everybody always moves the goalposts. And you can do that at the start, you're not gonna end up disappointed, right? What obstacles are in your way? Real obstacles, dietary knowledge, kids, childcare, all that sort of stuff, it all matters. Write it down and see how you can overcome those. Uh, see, see what help you need in helping them over, over, overcome those. If, if your biggest obstacle in succeeding your goals and you're determined, but your biggest obstacle is childcare, can you get someone else to look after your kid whilst you're doing something to achieve that goal, uh, such as, I don't know, going to the gym. Can you look out, someone look out, does your gym have a crash facility, of a childcare facility? Uh, do you have a friend uh, that, that can look after the kids for a while? Or can you go to the gym whilst your kid is in school? Or can you exercise at home with your child, right? Those are the questions you need to ask because those are solutions you can come up with. Everything we do is a positive. Everything in this thing is, is a positive. We're starting with joy and then we, we yes, we have obstacles, but we're, coming, we're overcoming those by putting solutions in place. Every obstacle that I've ever come across has a solution. It just takes a bit of time and maybe a bit of help to figure out what that particular solution is. Uh, on that happy note, I think I've waffled for quite a while. I've no idea how long I've been going for because my timer doesn't even show it. Um, I think I'll leave that. I think we've done all right. Right? So just remember, answer the questions. I will put the questions in the in the description of, of the podcast, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Peter at healthypostnatalbody.com, by the way, right? Always, if you, if, you, if you ever think to yourself, Pete, I get what you're saying but I'd like a bit more assistance, send me an email. I'm not even charging you. Peter at healthypostnatalbody.com. I've never charged anyone for answering any emails. I haven't, ever. And that reminds me, I have to respond to someone who contacted me before Christmas. I can sometimes be terrible at answering emails. Uh, it can sometimes take a while because I'm terrible for forgetting stuff and thinking I have... Uh, <laughs> think I have responded to something when I haven't yet so chase me up right more than happy to answer anything whether you're a member of HPMB or not don't ma it doesn't matter too much I love answering questions from people Peter at healthypostnatalbody.com I'll be back next week I don't know what I'm doing yet in 2022 because I haven't done my goals for them yet 
But you take care of yourself. Here's a new bit of music. Bye now. Start of the